Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Not so long ago, I did a video about wages and uh, things that the federal government might require you to do in a workplace. Of course, there are also state laws regarding what can happen in a workplace, talking about workplace conditions. And I mentioned an example of something in such a hypothetical way that it was obviously uh, both something I thought was a point to be made, but also in a jokingly roundabout way, I was telling a story of something that I knew had happened. That is, I said, oh, you know, you're running a place and it's a pizzeria and you get yourself one of those meat slicing machines. You should probably learn that you can't let underage kids use that because if they slice off parts of their fingers, you'll get in a lot of trouble. And I was referring to something about a story that I heard about and knew about firsthand. But someone sent me this and quite a few people actually sent me this, a story uh, from the Associated Press that talks about pretty much that exact same example, but not the same example I gave, but just something similar happening uh, out in California. Court orders subway franchise owners to pay workers nearly $1 million regarding wages and to sell or close their stores as a punishment for bad things happening in those workplaces. And as you will see, some of the workplace violations alleged involve underage kids using equipment that they're not supposed to be using. So, you know, you think about the age of a worker and you think, okay, well, I can think of a few obvious ones, right? Like if a kid's going to be driving a car, uh, he should probably be old enough to have a driver's license. I, uh, call me crazy. I, I, I understand that I get a lot of pushback when I float these ugh, crazy hypotheticals. <laughs> but yeah, okay, so that's one. But believe it or not, they'll say, for instance, that to use equipment that is dangerous, such as a meat slicing machine, you must be a certain age. Uh, and there's going to be other things that involve ages. And now, if you open up a franchise or you run a workplace or you have a business that you know, hires other people, you need to know what these laws are. And, and they're not that hard to find out. Um, I could see somebody 30 years ago complaining and saying, I went to open a business. I didn't know there's this wacky rule on this. But nowadays, you could probably type into Google a phrase such as, oh, I don't know, starting a business, what I need to know about hiring kids. Uh, I, I bet that would find you some interesting advice. Now, I understand the internet is uh, a little bit of a, a, a game of roulette as to what you're going to get when you Google something, but go through a few, uh, you know, spend five minutes instead of three minutes uh, reading the answers and you'll pretty quickly find out what you need to know. So this is out of San Francisco. A federal court ordered the owners of 14 subway locations north of San Francisco to pay their employees nearly $1 million in damages and back pay. So back pay is part of this, but also to sell or shut down their businesses with any sale proceeds of that going to the Department of Labor. Now, that will be a bit controversial. And again, uh, whether or not that's ever an appropriate remedy, where they say, you've done something wrong, stop forever, and, and let us have the proceeds of what's left over of your business. Uh, that might be <laughs> a bit harsh. But federal investigators said the franchise owners directed children as young as 14 to operate dangerous machinery. Assigned minors work hours that violated federal law <clears throat> and failed to pay their employees regularly, including by issuing hundreds of bad checks and illegally keeping tips left by customers. <laughs> and I'm only laughing because I did a video, and that's the other thing that we talked about in the video was the tips left by customers. So now t Subway doesn't have servers in the traditional sense, at least none of the Subways I've been in. In fact, most subways I've been in are woefully understaffed in the such a way that you walk in and you order here and you walk down the counter with the person you just ordered with and then they hand you your food and they also take your money. So, uh, I don't know. But I've also seen where they've got a tip jar uh, down there that says, you want to tip us? You can. So I think most people, and again, I got some, again, I got some pushback when I suggested that restaurants should inform their customers that, by the way, if you tip our waitresses, that will be split with other people behind her who are supporting her or him. And, and I, I've got no problem with that underlying concept that, for instance, a bartender uh, reacted very angrily to my video and said, because he goes, Steve, I'm, I'm a bartender. I spend all this time making drinks for people I don't get to meet. 
He goes, so should I work for free? I said, no, your boss should pay you. But if he's not or she's not paying you enough, well, that's something to gripe about. But I think that the person who's handing a tip to a waiter or a waitress has the right to know who's getting that tip. That's, that's all I'm saying. So if I go down the line at a subway and watch them build my chicken teriyaki foot long, uh, and, I, and I decide to give them a, a big old bill because I'm generous, <laughs> oh, this is a fake one, so this wouldn't help, <laughs> and I stick it in the tip jar, I expect that, especially if I only dealt with one person, that they're going to get that. So if the boss has kept that money, that, to me, would be a problem. The other thing is dangerous machinery. I'm suspecting we're talking about a meat slicer, but I could be wrong because I think a lot of the stuff that Subway gets, their ingredients and so on, are given to them, and they're pre-cut, pre-cooked, pre-everything. So I've seen them dump out the new batches of, of the innards. I think it's to call it the innards of, of a submarine sandwich. <laughs> The Labor Department also charged that the uh, owners coerced employees in an attempt to prevent them from cooperating with this investigation, and that an associate of theirs played a role in those efforts, including threatening an employee who complained about receiving a bad check. Now, if you are an employer and you give your employee a bad check, when they complain, they've got a right to complain. I, I got news for you, and, and, and I know this will come as a surprise to many people. In many states... It is illegal to write a bad check. Now, it, it does depend on what a bad check is. But if I write you a check that is NSF, non-sufficient funds, I don't have the money in the account to cover that check, but I write it and I give it to you and I don't tell you. I say, hey, there you go, that's your paycheck. Knowing full well you're going to go to the bank and watch that thing bounce, that's a crime in many states, okay? It's a crime in Michigan. It's a crime, okay? So... When uh, someone starts investigating, if you start interfering with the investigation, it gets you back to that place we talk about where it wasn't so much what they did, it was the cover-up or, or the aftermath, okay? So uh, I'm not saying this is a cover-up. I'm simply saying that, that if, in fact, they did interfere with the investigation, that will almost always annoy the investigators. And, and, and you don't want to annoy federal investigators. The... Uh, People here did not admit to threatening or coercing employees, according to their lawyer, who added they did admit to issuing bad checks. They did admit that and violating some labor standards, some. Uh, the attorney added that the owner did not admit to threatening anybody, but simply agreed to settle what they called a he said, she said situation to put it to rest. And that will get you to an interesting situation. Again, how do we know who to believe? The uh, underage employee says, I was running this dangerous machine, didn't know it was against the law, or they told me to do it, and I knew it was against the law, whatever. And the owner says, I never told him to do that. There's a big old sign, must be so old to operate this machine, must be this tall to work the meat slicer, Wh whatever the sign says, <laughs> okay? And, of course, at that point, the investigators are kind of tasked with trying to figure out who's telling the truth, and then when they bring it to court, the court is then tasked with figuring out who's telling the truth. So some of these he said, she said would not get resolved if push came to shove unless you actually had a trial. So they've settled this, and the attorney's saying, well, they just settled it because they were concerned about the fact that who knows who's going to win when it's a swearing contest, is what we call that, where the credibility of, of two people is in question because one person under oath says, that happened. The other person under oath said, that did not happen. Someone's got to pick a winner. And at that point, assign who's the liar. The attorney added that the owners are people of modest means who are unlikely to be able to pay the sum agreed to in the court order. So the court order says they got to pay the nearly $1 million. But the attorney says the settlement agreement might make it look like they're just going to cough up a $1 million. That's not going to happen. And so the bigger question I have here, and, and I, I agree that this is the question that troubles me, is the headline says... Court orders them to sell or close their stores. And that sounds like they've been sentenced, and the sentence is you can no longer operate a Subway franchise. Can they open a McDonald's if they had the money and the ability to do so? Could they open uh, a Tubby's? You know what I'm saying? Like, it seems strange to me that, that they'd be that specific and say you cannot open a Subway or you can't keep these ones open. And so... The, the, the real question here is, uh, does the government have the right to tell you, going forward, you cannot operate such a business in the future? 
And I find that strange because it seems to me that, again, and, and as an attorney, a lot of people assume that my job is just to sue people. And that's not true. My job often is to solve problems. And so if someone said, Steve, we're going to point you the omniscient, all-powerful being that gets to look at this and straighten this out, what would you do? I would sit down with these owners and go, look, you've been accused of all of these things. And we can go to court and, you know, see what happens when we seek to enforce these various laws against you for having broken all these laws. However, if you're interested in resolving this, perhaps we could do something where you enter a plea, uh, you admit that you did these things, you pay a fine, and we do something to make sure it doesn't happen again. And that could be that we simply appoint someone to oversee this while you're doing this. Or, or perhaps you create some kind of business plan that explains what you're going to do going forward to make sure it doesn't happen again. And maybe some, it, it, it could be a form of probation, at least in, in what it would look like. That is, going forward, you'd promise that you'd never do these things. You might hire a business consultant who will come in and, and talk to you about your workplace and make sure your workplace always passes muster, as they say. But there's things you could do. And so it seems draconian to say, well, did these things wrong. We're going to fine you. And, oh, by the way, you can never be in this business again and sell your stores. That does seem a bit extreme. I'm not sure what they would get if they sold their franchises, 14 subway locations north of San Francisco. Uh, and even if they can sell them because it's being franchises, there might be some issues there. The, in other words, they can possibly sell them. They might be allowed to do that. But there might be hoops they got to jump through to make that happen. And the question is, you know, is it worth it? I don't know. But it is kind of a strange outcome. I've done a lot of food stories in the last year. It's usually, though, whether or not the chicken's really chicken whether the foot long is really a foot long, uh, and how much strawberry is in that 16th of an inch inside a strawberry Pop-Tart. Uh, but here we have it where the courts ordered Subway franchise owners to pay workers nearly a million dollars and to sell or close their stores. And that's when the Associated Press sent me by a whole bunch of people. And every time I wear this shirt, I get asked. And yes, I will tell you right now, this is one of the coolest shirts in my collection sent in by a viewer. Thank you very much. Uh, and, of course, it's the Batmobile, right? That's the Batmobile. On the back, it says Fiberglass Freaks, which is the company and that really, really cool guy who makes the Batmobile replicas. I did some videos about him, and shortly thereafter, a viewer ordered the shirt for me. And so if you're interested, look up Fiberglass Freaks on the Internet. Check out the guy's website. He makes replicas of the classic Batmobile, which is represented on the T-shirt. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. Nothing happens by accident. You are exactly where you're meant to be.